spring had been unusually rainy. Grapes wove a picturesque architrave over the entry gate, setting beautiful clusters of green fruit. I was hoping another vine planted earlier was ready to yield abundant pods. I had planted beans earlier using the aid of a simple cold frame to get them to germinate faster. I planted the old homestead pole bean variety as well as the scarlet runner bean with large seeds. The vines planted in the cold frame had sprouted earlier and had grown spectacularly large deep green leaves. I had made sure to mulch abundantly with grass clippings. That coupled with pouring rain had caused the beans to grow with tremendous vigor. I was just looking forward to have them flower and set fruit. A brief hiatus brought out the sun for a couple of weeks in mid-June, when fireflies dominate the nocturnal horizon. The beans are looking spectacular. I can see several flowers here and they're starting to even set fruit. So it's not gonna be too long before I can start harvesting the, the beans. And they will probably be very prolific. They've taken advantage of this trellis. They look awesome. And I'm really feeling the way this, this place is turning out. Now, I don't know how long this will take for them to, to um, start producing and how long they will be producing and still looking pretty nice if they'll go all the way towards the end of the season. I actually don't see any of the scarlet beans growing here. So those I know that go all the way towards the end. But these are new and I hope to see how they actually taste. I had planted old scarlet runner bean seeds, trying to use up my ever-growing collection of seed packets. Since they were several years old and had not been stored in perfect conditions, their chance of still being viable and growing was small, but to compensate for that, I had several volunteer yard-long bean vines growing and they were already setting fruit. They are rather resilient vines that are able to snake their way into spaces, producing well. So I would class them as a nice option for small gardens if you want to maximize production. Just remember to keep them picked, since it is better to eat them when they are smaller before any noticeable seeds develop. They can be cooked and eaten later, but the pot itself gets more fibrous. The old homestead pole bean was steadily developing pods as the flowers were pollinated by the local bees and other insects. At this stage, frankly, I didn't notice much difference with the batch grown in the cold frame and the other ones, as both groups looked very similar. Summer invites new inside and got a basket to collect my first bean harvest. It is a good idea to keep bean vines well picked once they start producing. Leaving pots to mature in the vine may cause the plant to produce less, but by constantly harvesting the developing pods, even as smaller than ideal specimens, should give you a greater harvesting window. block, I share what happened to the beans. Would I suffer a major setback right after this commercial? If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. As summer temperatures intensified, the beans continued to pump out pods, with their roots covered by a cool layer of grass clipping mulch. I'm really amazed at how this planting is turning out. It's getting better each day, and the beans, they look absolutely phenomenal. 
they have a romantic touch that I wasn't expecting. And the other thing is that actually they're producing a lot. I'm being able to get um, beans every day in a good amount, and I've only planted a few plants. So I can only imagine what a full, full-on garden with several of these plants would look like. So this species, this variety of beans, is certainly a keeper for small spaces. And even the groundhog, which has been nibbling around things, because these beans grow up, and since beans are a groundhog favorite food, they're able to survive because the groundhog will only eat the, the leaves that are in the bottom. That way, there's a lot of growth. I wouldn't waste my space or time growing bush-style beans, only pole beans. I think that's the way to go if you have a small space. I would suppose that bush-type beans are good for fields, for planting large fields, but not for a small space. And of course, bush-style beans become a perfect meal for a voracious groundhog as they get to chomp down on a high-protein plant right at their eye level. Speaking of eye level, the yard-long beans were producing heavily in a low, unprotected spot. For some reason, the groundhog had not attacked it yet. I was playing with fire, for as soon as it learned that that was the case, I wouldn't be able to do much. Perhaps yard-long beans are not the groundhog's favorite. They are beans originally from Asia and are actually a completely different species from all the other beans. I did wise up and put some plastic mesh I had laying around over the plants. I had popcorn growing right amongst the beans and judging from their robust leaves and tall canes, there was no shortage of nitrogen fertilizer here. The repeated grass clipping applications were doing the trick. The sheer amount of green biomass was a statement to the power of this mulch. Indeed, I am becoming more and more convinced that fresh grass clippings are more than enough nitrogen fertilizer for a garden. And considering that most people in the suburbs see grass clippings as a waste product, there is even more reason to use it in the garden as a main source of fertility. Despite the competition from a heavy feeder like corn, and even having to deal with a bit shadier conditions cast by other beans, the yard-long beans were producing so much, I could not keep up with harvesting them. Several of the pods had grown too old to eat the pods, but their still tender beans, once shelled, made for delicious stir-fry ingredients. These pods grow exponentially faster as they mature, and since they are green and thin when they're perfect picking stage, they can go unseen, being mistaken for a green stem. Once they swell up and become lighter and easier to spot, it is generally past their prime as green beans. It is easy to see why they are called yard-long beans. I went about untangling them from the protective plastic mesh as I harvest both the younger pods to use as green beans and the slightly older ones to be shelled. But going back to the idea of using grass clippings as fertilizers, I think it is a great way of using a refuse to one's advantage. Of course, using a lawnmower, while it is convenient, is less than ideal ecologically. Using a scythe to cut longer grass or hay would be ideal, but it takes skill and constant sharpening, as well as a place that allows taller grass to grow. That is usually not the case in many suburbs where zoning laws restrict the height of grass and mandate the presence of closely shorn lawns as the only acceptable ground cover for front yards. Longer cut grass or hay would be great to use as mulch and fertilizer. Using plant compost instead of animal manures has another advantage. They are less concentrated and provide just the right amount of fertility plants need without the risk of burning them as fresh manure can. Also, not using animal manures in the garden diminishes the risk of pathogens like salmonella and others. The massive cases of contaminated veggies we hear about in the news are usually caused by animal manures. Of course there are disadvantages in using grass clippings. They have grass and weed seeds which may increase weed pressure in your beds as time goes by. They can also clump together and mat up if it rains a lot or you put too thick of a fresh layer at once. Repeated thin applications that allow the clippings to dry a bit work the best in my opinion. I would be wary of using commercial hay because a lot of hay farmers use a persistent broadleaf herbicide that can impact the growth of your plants for several years. Same goes to manures from animals that eat this herbicide-laced hay. But as you can see, clippings from your lawn 
can be more than adequate nitrogen fertilizer, and each year I'm getting more and more surprised by the results. My bean vines continue producing more and more beans as time went on.